Okay, welcome to the second in the mini series on systems biology. And uh, the previous lecture we talked a little bit about chemical kinetics, not much, but a little bit. Um, some of the terminology that was introduced included the rate of reaction, symbol V, uh, rate of change, Have the symbol dx by dt and stoichiometric coefficients. Coefficients, which are the symbol, um, let's be consistent here, have the symbol cx. Okay. Oops. Cx. Okay, here we go. So we had V, dx by dt, and Cx, rate of reaction, rate of change, stoichiometric coefficient. And the relationship between all three of them was that the reaction rate is the rate of change multiplied by uh, the reciprocal of the stoichiometric coefficient Cx. That's the, this is the um, primary relationship, okay? And you can rewrite this in a different way you can go, um, sorry, you can go dx by dt equals cxv, okay? And if this, this is the form that we normally use when building, say, a computer model of a chemical system, okay? Now, cx uh, is positive for reactor, uh, sorry, for products. and was negative for reactants. And the number, the, the numerical value of CX just comes directly from the stoichiometry in the reaction. So for example, if I had two A goes to B, to B uh, then the stoichiometric coefficient for CA will be minus two. Remember it's minus for reactants and for B, CB would be plus one. There's basically invisible one in front of the B, okay? Okay. Um, so that's, that's where we got to. Um, and the thing I wanna do now is talk about a V, okay? What is V? Uh, the units are moles per volume per time. That's basically what the units are usually anyway. Uh, what is V? So let's, uh, let's consider that. So I have a reaction A goes to B and I have a reaction rate. What determines V, okay? What determines reaction rate? Uh, well, there are various things that can determine the reaction rate. Uh, one, of course, is temperature. Um, concentration. Uh, pressure. pH etc. All right, there's a whole bunch of stuff that can affect how fast a reaction goes, okay? Whether it goes quickly or slowly. The thing we're concerned with here is the concentration. How does the concentration affect the reaction rate, okay? So let's say I had, let's say I started off with a concentration of A of uh, five millimolar, and the corresponding rate was, let's say, three three moles per liter per second, okay? Let's say that was the uh, that was an experiment somebody did and they discovered at five millimolar, the reaction was going at three moles per liter per second. If I doubled this to 10 millimolar, what might you expect the reaction rate to do? Now under ideal conditions, what actually happens is that the reaction rate simply doubles. So it goes moles per liter per second, per, sorry, per liter per second. And we can actually state for a simple reaction like this, the re that the reaction rate is actually simply proportional to the concentration of A. Um, one thing I guess I should say about symbols and concentration, you normally find in chemical textbooks, chemistry textbooks, that concentration is given with square brackets. Uh, that's a bit wordy. Um, in some modern uh, biochemical books, they will use the uh, lowercase a. I use that in one of my books and 
Um, there are a number of chemical kinetics books that use this notation. Uh, I won't do that here. I'll just say A is the concentration, okay? Just, just to keep things simple. So this statement here says that the reaction rate for this reaction here is proportional to the concentration of A, okay? Not the amount of A, but the concentration of A. Since it's proportional, I can then also say that the rate is equal to some scaling factor, K, times the concentration of A. Uh, this factor here is called a rate constant. Okay, that's the rate constant, right? If I were to plot, um, if I were to plot the reaction rate as a function of concentration of A, I would get a simple straight line. I think you'd probably agree with that. So at zero A, obviously I got no reaction rate and then it increases linearly as I increase um, A, all right? Now, because it's linear, okay, because it's linear, uh, this, note that the slope here, actually, the slope is K, all right? The, because it's linear, uh, it's called a first order reaction, okay? You also come across the phrase mass action kinetics, which is also a phrase that's used to indicate this kind of, of kinetic law, all right? So I'll often refer to this thing here as a kinetic law or kinetic rate law, okay? Let's do a proper law, all right? Uh, what about for something like uh, 2A goes to B, okay? Well, actually, uh, if you think about it, it would seem reasonable that um, the rate of reaction must must be related to how often two A's collide, and that must be related to the probability of A meeting an A. And in probabilities, of course, we multiply, uh, we use the multiplication law. And so, in fact, the reaction rate for a, reaction, for a system like this is simply the rate constant as, per, as before, times a squared, right? And a squared goes back to that probability idea that the probability of a reaction happening is the probability of a meeting a and combining to form b. And the, when you have two probabilities like that, you multiply them and so you end up with a squared. In fact, this can be completely generalized if you have n a plus m b going to say to c, then the rate law is actually the probabilities of all of these meeting, which is then a rate constant times a to the power n times b to the power of m, okay? So you actually can generalize this, and this is the full mass action kinetic law. Now, in, in principle, you can extend this to as many species as you want, but of course that becomes a bit unrealistic in the sense that the likelihood of lots of molecules meeting simultaneously in one instant is actually very rare. So, but still for, for complex reactions, we often reduce them to this kind of, you know, form and, and then we use this kind of uh, rate law to describe them. Now, technically, um, you should actually measure, you should actually, you do experiments to determine whether, for example, in this case, the law actually is, does follow a squared. Note that if I was to plot uh, v against a, okay, I would get something like that, all right? So that's the a, that's the k a squared, all right? Uh, that's not always the case, uh, especially if the reaction is not elementary. And by the elementary, I mean, if a reaction is actually made of multiple steps, it's unlikely that it'll follow the simple mass action uh, law. Okay, if it's elementary, I, there are no intermediate steps, uh, then it may well follow mass action kinetics. Uh, but chemists will emphasize that uh, you really, to confirm you know, what, the, what kind of rate law it is, you should really measure it and do experiments to determine what kind of rate law it is. So by the way, this, when you have a square, this is um, a second, oops, second order, reaction with respect to A, okay? Second order with respect to A. 
So these ones here, this is nth order with respect to A, this is mth order with respect to B. Okay. Now it's also possible to have a reaction where uh, as I change A, actually nothing happens. So V is some constant. In this case, uh, there's a, you can imagine that there's an A here, but to the power of zero. And of course, A to the power of zero is one. So this then is called a zero order, zero there, zero order reaction with respect to A. Okay, so you can have uh, zero first and second order reactions. Uh, those are probably the most common. Yes, you could get, you could have nth order and mth order, but uh, much less common. Okay. All right. So, so this is that's that's the idea of um, mass action kinetics. Actually, let's let's form a table here just to summarize. So let's see. If, so this is the reaction. This is the rate law. Okay, V. So if my reaction A goes to B, then the rate law is K times A. If the reaction is A plus A goes to B, then my rate is uh, K times A squared. If it's completely independent of A, I'll do it just this way, then it's just a constant. And in general, if I have, um, you know, um, N A plus M B plus so equal Q, Q, C, et cetera, uh, then my V is equal to some K times A to the N times B to the M times C to the Q and so on. Right? That's in general, that's what it would be. As I say, I want to emphasize that uh, strictly speaking, these should be measured. The chemists will always say this and they're quite right to say it. Uh, the actual rate law uh, one should measure but as a first approximation, this kind of uh, thing is quite reasonable. Okay. Uh, okay, and that's the, I think that's, that's enough for that one. Okay, so I think uh, we'll stop there.